Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're TIG welding aluminum today and for this video we're doing a little T-joint here right in front of me on the bench not in any kind of fancy position and I'm using a very simple welder today because I want to save the all the settings like AC frequency and AC balance and amplitude and waveforms and all that's going to come in future videos. That's a lot of stuff to talk about. So today I just want to talk about a few things uh, that make a lot of difference on on aluminum especially on a T-joint. Trying to keep a decent looking fillet weld. You know, it's basically same as it is on carbon steel. It's arc length and it's torch angle and it's having the right amperage. The only thing is on aluminum, all that matters way more than it does on carbon steel. It's a lot less forgiving. If, you're, if you've welded aluminum already, you, you know that, you know, if you accidentally flick the filler wire into the electrode or sputter a little bit, it makes a lot more difference. Things just go south really quick if you do that on aluminum, whereas on steel you sputter, maybe maybe, it'll, maybe it makes a difference and maybe it doesn't, maybe you can just keep on going, you know. And so that's the thing about aluminum. Everything that makes a difference on steel or any other kind of welding makes more of a difference on aluminum. So you really got to pay attention to these things. And plus there's all kinds of other little nuances that come into play, and I'll talk about them as, as we go. All right, so I'm using a simple welder today. None, none of the bells and whistles, no AC frequency adjustment, or any of that stuff, no AC balance, just basically polarity and amperage, and that's about it. The rest of the settings are kind of built in. This is a Lincoln TIG 175 square wave I'm using today. Then uh, later on, I'll do the same joint using a couple of inverter machines, talking about frequency, AC balance, waveforms, and, and the effects that they have. But for today, just some basic tips on making a nice bead on a 2F fillet weld, how to keep the bead small, how to get that metal to flow into the corner, things like that. Let's do it. Machines just don't get much more simple than this. It's got a preset uh, post flow timer and it's got an auto AC balance, which means it automatically adjusts uh, AC balance as you're welding according to the level of oxidation of the metal. But that's really all there is to getting started with this. Now today I'm going to be using this little number five quartz cup just basically maybe so it will help filming and, and help be able to see things a little bit better. I don't usually use these these cups. In fact, this is really my first experience with them, but it's a Weld Tech cup and it seemed to work okay for this video. I'm using a tapered electrode to tack with because lighting up at low amperage works a lot better with a with a tip like that than a blunt tip. I'm going to start a bead kind of mid joint here just to kind of uh, get that out of the way and show how that works with the pointed blunt pointed tip. What you really want to do is you want to puddle it and get rod in there and join it with a, as little rod as you can to start with. You don't want to be getting a big huge bead started and then have to neck it down and I'll, I'll, I'll show that in detail a little bit later in this video. Let's get another view from behind now. Again, this is about probably about 155 amps, but I'm not quite using full pedal for some of it as it heats up. Using 330 second, that's 2.4 millimeter filler wire and electrode with somewhere around 13 to 15 CFH on the argon gas flow. You can see the cleaning action going as that auto AC balance works. Now I pretty much use 2% lanthanated electrodes for everything. I believe it's the best all-purpose electrode. Not necessarily the best for every individual application, but the best all-purpose if you just want one, if you just want to keep one electrode in your box. Usually what I do when I'm TIG welding aluminum is I just put a blunt taper on the electrode and I just let it ball however it will ball. And that usually works out pretty well. With a blunt point on the electrode, it lets me start nice and crisp at low amperage, like if I'm on a very edge, and then as I come in and need more heat, it just balls however it will ball, and that works out fine usually. But sometimes you get little nodules or a little hook on the end and it misshapes, who knows why, and then sometimes it works better. When that, when that happens, sometimes it's better just to go ahead and ball it by putting the machine on reverse polarity, or if you've got an inverter or a machine that's got AC balance, just crank it to max cleaning and ball the electrode intentionally, and then it just stays that way. It doesn't start very well at low amperage with a, with a rounded tip on it. I say, I say ball, when I say ball the electrode, I don't put a ball ball, I just round it. And so let's take a look at that right now. 
All you need to do to round the electrode is flip over to DC plus or DC positive, DC reverse polarity and get a piece of copper or a piece of aluminum, a thick block of aluminum or even clean steel works. And just uh, pump the pedal just enough and back off until you until you shape the, the tip of the electrode the way you want it. Now I've gone a little bit fast where I really would like it for this one, but it'll be okay. Sometimes what I, in fact, a lot of times when I'm doing a T-joint like this, I'll I'll run a real tight arc when I'm flowing metal ahead, so that I flow it down into the corner, and then I will pull the electrode back a little bit while I add filler rod. And that works for me. There's lots of ways to do it. I've seen plenty of people just go along nice and steady and dab 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 and and make it look just fine. But it's just something I've kind of gravitated towards. All right, well, that was with a rounded tip. That joint right there was with the electrode with a rounded tip. Let's talk for a minute about crater cracks. Aluminum is different than steel in that it has a characteristic called hot shortness. It's hot short. All that means is it's brittle when it's hot. Instead of being more ductile like steel is, you know, you can heat steel up cherry red and bend it all over the place and it won't crack. It's more ductile when it gets hot. Aluminum is not. Aluminum is more likely to crack when you, when you put heat on it. So that's why you get crater cracks in aluminum sometimes when you end, uh, end the bead abruptly or small tacks on aluminum oftentimes will crack because all that expanding around it and contracting uh, along with the metal being hot short pulls it apart. Let's take a look at what to do to, to prevent crater cracks when you stop a bead. I'm going along just fine here and I'm going to stop rather abruptly. I'm not going to taper off at all or add, or add extra filler metal. And if you look closely you can see a crack coming out of the center of that crater. I'll point at it right there. Happens all the time. Now this, you hear a different pitch here because I'm using an inverter for this shot. Actually, I'm doing some work on the next video here. You see me add a little extra filler as I taper off the amperage, and that will prevent crater cracks most of the time. Getting started off on the right foot when you're starting a bead mid-run on a T-joint uh, can be a problem. You can, you can, if you're not careful when you're learning, you think I need to cram some rod in there to join these two pieces together, and then you have a big bead where you've bridged a big place, and then you're tunneling up a, a lack of fusion area underneath, and you need to start off on the right foot. So let's take a look at what that looks like right now. Again, first we're going to take a look at how not to start a bead. I'm going to do a lot of stuff wrong here. I've got a, a rounded tip. I'm holding a really long arc. I've got the electrode extended out quite a ways too and that can be a problem. And I'm adding rod before it's really ready to add rod and it's oxidizing. And now I'm, I've joined the two pieces but it's not flowing into the root of the joint. I'm bridging a gap and I'm getting lack of fusion now. Let's slow it down a little bit and watch how that arc wanders all around that rounded tip until I get it up to a certain amperage where it's coming off the very tip of the ball now. And we'll, let's, let's walk through it again tried to add rod before it was ready and it just oxidized and balled up the rod and then wadded in there and fell in there and creates a lot bigger beginning of the well than I need and then it's hard to get it to shrink back down once you get it big like that and you get lack of fusion because you don't pinpoint the heat down into the root of the joint. Let's try it again a little bit better with a tapered electrode. We'll light up here, it's a very stable arc get things puddling and then use the rod to join the pieces but not cram a bunch of rod in there and then just pause for a second and let the, let the heat build up a little bit and then move on. Let's watch that in slow motion. Not a lot of arc wandering going on there off this blunt tapered electrode. Just starts a lot better than a rounded electrode. Coming soon we'll talk about uh, the same joint using inverter power sources at higher frequency. This is 250 hertz while you're hearing a high pitch uh, sound right here. But that will be in a, in a video coming very shortly. Well that about wraps it up for this week's video. Those are just some basic tips using a basic welder for running a bead on an aluminum T-joint and trying to keep that bead small and uniform. There's a whole lot more to talk about so we'll just do that in coming weeks. See you next time. As always thanks for watching. Leave a comment or a question if you'd like to under the YouTube video. 
Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet.